Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 8th, coming up on 10 a.m. here. Taking a look at the infrared satellite loop, you can see we've got a weak ridge of high pressure protecting the Pacific Northwest from systems for at least a couple days here. You can see some more systems lined up out to the west that may be affecting us later on next week. And you can see some cold air bottled up over Alaska and northern Canada here on the infrared satellite imagery. So let's take a look at the next couple of days and see what we can expect. Um, this is looking on into Sunday, actually, first. So look at the mid and upper 50s for the Willamette Valley and Oregon coast. 50s all the way up to Seattle there. You can see eastern portions of the state, a lot of snow on the ground still. Maybe some 40s in the valleys and 30s elsewhere. A lot of snow still on the ground there. So look at that. 50 in Seattle, 52 in Portland here. And look at on Sunday. You might be clear of clouds for a while. Can you imagine 50 degrees and sunny? That would be quite the treat after what we've been enduring here the last few days, actually the last few months. So this is fog potential. There is some fog potential for Willamette Valley and Puget Sound a little bit. It's this darker area showing up here. East slopes of the Cascades possible. Shouldn't be too big of a deal right now as it stands. So taking a look around the region, all the major passes are still closed, including I-5 southbound out of Olympia and Seattle. Uh, White Pass, Snoqualmie, Stevens Pass, all closed. I do not recommend trying to travel on Highway 101. It's been closed off and on during that time. So this flooding, I don't know how long this is going to take to get I-5 back open, but it could be a few days. And the passes aren't going to be open until at least Sunday. And looking from some of the pictures, the amount of snowfall on the roadway, it could be longer than that. So stay informed of those past closures taking a look on into the extended a little bit here this is monday sunday night actually so this is into monday morning here and check out this atmospheric river starting to get organized out here and starts pointing itself towards western oregon and washington again there now it's on land and this is tuesday afternoon and this is as far as this 06 euro runs, but you can see that we don't need any more of this atmospheric river nonsense right now. We need a break from this rainfall. We had some pretty severe flooding and we've got a lot of snow still on the ground up in the higher terrain. We don't need that melting anymore. And our ground is very saturated. So hopefully this doesn't come to fruition. But if we look at the GFS, the 12Z also paints a similar picture. You can see that atmospheric river out here. Pineapple Express all the way from Hawaii going towards mainly Western Washington there and Vancouver Island, British Columbia, and it hangs out there for a while. So there's some pretty big totals here we'll look at here in a minute. Let's actually update this and see if the 12Z is running. It is. Let's see how far out it's going here and see if it still paints that atmospheric river. This is into Monday, and there it is organizing out here again. And yeah, this is no good. I mean, this could be ugly again, folks, next week. We're really going to have to watch this. This is Pineapple Express all the way into Western Washington again. So this is our next big headline coming up here into next week, Tuesday. So checking out the actual total precip that the GFS is showing here. This is Monday. And look at the streaming. The GFS is pointed a little further north. So you notice those bullseyes are mainly in British Columbia northern washington coast and vancouver island there but you can see some really extreme totals on vancouver island over a foot of rain in the in the mountains there some places over eight inches and you say well that's precipitation maybe it's going to fall as snow up there okay well let's take a look at that this is whistler check this out so this is 100 centimeters about four inches of precipitation and you say okay that's all let's see what that's going to fall at though is that rain or snow and during that time, you can see this is uh, temperature in Celsius. That's above freezing. All the ensembles show this is above freezing. I mean, very few have it right at freezing. So that would be a danger zone. I mean, that's going to be a lot of snow melt and a lot of runoff coming into British Columbia. And again, if that atmospheric river, like on the European, shows it further south into Washington, then, of course, Seattle and the Cascades and the Washington coast are going to be bullseye again there, too, which could be very devastating. This is Quileute, North Washington coast. You can see the ensembles picking up on that. This is the 06Z European model run here. And you can see the control over three inches, the mean close to two inches there. So it's picking up on that signal there too. GFS shows the same thing. That's Northwest Washington coast. And here's Comox. This is on the other side of Vancouver Island. 
in British Columbia, look at this. Some this isn't even in the upper terrain, and, and the control is calling for four inches of precip there. So this is definitely our no next weather maker. We have to watch this atmospheric river slowly because I mean we've just been bombarded with snow and flooding, and it might be on the return here. So we'll have to watch that. And looking off into the extended, I talked about this in the live chat last night, Pacific North American Oscillation here. You can see that these, when it trends negative, it tends to be much colder and snowier for the Pacific Northwest. And you can see our value for December 2021, negative 2.56. And taking a look at the European weeklies here, this is an extended outlook here. You can see this is the Pacific North American Oscillation, what I was just talking about. You can see we go positive for a while there. Then in the second half or later portion of January, we drop below into the negative values again. And we remain quite negative for a while all the way into mid-February before we start to get back to normal again. So that's a strong signal for a cold snowy pattern later January into February again. Checking out the CFS monthly also too. This is a very extended model outlook also. You can see big ridging and big troughing here. And you get that north flow that allows the potential for Arctic air to get down into our region. So we have the signal for some potential cold weather return here in Pacific Northwest. It is a far out and these runs can change, of course. I mean, you're talking a month out in some of these scenarios. So anyway, the signal is there though. Maybe we'll do three out of four years in a row for February here in Seattle in the Pacific Northwest. So here is the landslide index here for places in Western Washington. You can see Seattle, Boeing Field, and Everett are still on the bad side of this line. You don't want to be on the right side of this line. That means increased risk of landslide potential. And Seattle and Tacoma Narrows are even much further to the right there. And this, these landslides can occur days after the event. So heads up there. Doesn't Just because it stopped raining doesn't mean the landslide threat is over. It's a pretty significant landslide about a mile and a half from my house here it launched out into the street almost took the house took their entire backyard it was a pretty significant landslide there and I tried to take pictures of it but it doesn't really do it justice when you take pictures um so yeah that's what's going on so far um this is actually from the summer these were the all-time record highs this is locations that set their all-time record high in that heat wave back in late june i mean all time not daily high not monthly high all time beating July totals, August totals. This is really significant. I mean, check out all these high temperatures in the higher terrain, especially Willamette Valley just peppered with record highs. Seattle, Puget Sound, Eastern Washington out to the coast. Just a very unique, probably a once in a lifetime event. Well, at least I hope so anyway. So yeah, you guys are liking these videos. Looks like I'm getting some good feedback. Uh, continue to like, subscribe, and I may do a live feed later on. I was figuring a I, I may go down and look at some of the flooding and try to drone footage some of that. Um, we'll see how that goes today. I may start down here in the next hour or so. But yeah, thanks for stopping by and I will put out another video tomorrow and possibly a live feed here in the next couple of days. So I will talk to you guys later. Thanks.